ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استوصوا بالنساء be kind to women the prophet said فان امراه امراه خلقت من ذلع because the woman she is created from the rib وان عرق and the most crooked part of the rib is the higher, the upper part is more crooked than the lower part. And if you try to straighten the rib, it will be break. And if you just leave it, it will remain crooked. So be nice to the women. Now, uh, in, sorry, in psychology, as we're discussing this hadith where the Prophet says women are uh, made of the rib and they are crooked, meaning the rib isn't actually crooked, right? I mean the rib is curved. curved. Yeah, it's curved. So there's no, uh, the, the women, as you know, their bodies also have a lot of curves. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made women. So their nature is after Rabbi Shahni Sadri wa Yasirni so uh, the Prophet says, Be kind to women. Why? Because men have to make an extra effort to be kind to women because their nature, there's something about their nature that is very feminine, but also at the same time, even though it is very feminine, but it is also an obstacle in relationships. And so the Prophet saying, be kind, and then the Prophet talks about the, they're curved, don't try to straighten them out. If you try to straighten them out, they will break. Don't try to change them. Okay? And if you try to change them, they'll break, and then you won't find what you find attractive them in them. Meaning, if you try to change their curviness, their feminine femininity, if you try to take it out of them, like what is an example of that? For example, Many times, women expect you to understand what they're thinking without telling you, right? So the wife, she expects that my husband, if he really loves me, this is how it goes in the female's mind, if he really loves me, he would know what I'm thinking, right? And we know that's just, the women amongst themselves are very intuitive. Women can tell, or women are intuitive of the feelings of others, because they're mothers, right, biologically. And they're also intuitive the feelings of themselves and their husband. And women can predict the behavior of their spouses, whereas men are not able to predict the behavior of their wives, nor are they able to guess what they're feeling. So they sometimes need it straight. But anyhow, the wives expect that, uh, you know, somehow the men should know that uh, the men should know what they're going through uh, somehow magically okay and this is and I have so many things to cover today inshallah in this amount of time but the point is the Prophet is saying be nice to women because they have a curvy nature and it comes with its its obstacles its quirks uh, its its own charm you can say but just be and he ends again look Allah created them this way this is why you actually like them but yet it comes with its problems so istawsu bin nisa so be kind to women Okay, so uh, I want to go through a lot of things today. As uh, so, I want to talk about there are in classical psycho in modern psychology there are two theories about interpersonal relationships. What is the key corner key key thing that causes a good relationship to happen? One is, as I have been discussing, the way men and women communicate differently. So this is one aspect. So this has been one major theory where books like Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and other, you know, He Said, She Said, there are other books that are very classical books, very detailed research that talk about how men and women communicate differently. There's another uh, research work, and it's been done uh, <coughs> by this uh, fellow. Uh, he, um, he, he, the book is called The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work, uh, John Gottman. He wrote a very good book also, in which he did his own research. 
And what he said, it's not just communi it's not communication that makes the good marriage. And therefore, the key is not to necessarily understanding how men communicate differently from women and how women communicate differently from men. And he talks about some of the things where, that are common to both. And uh, so some of the things that he mentions that, uh, just for example, I'll just read this part over here. Uh, predicting divorce, it's called. Uh, many years of research, Gottman's research astonishing claim is to be able to make 91% accurate predictions of whether a couple will divorce or stay married after observing them for only five minutes. So how did he do that? He basically says it's not the communication, even if the communication is great, or even if the communication is very bad, but the main things that really lead to a very bad situation are the following. Number one, harsh, everything has, to, all of these, I'll just mention them very quickly, harsh start, startups, which is being sarcastic, criticizing, okay, having contempt, starting off sentences in contempt, criticism is the second one, contempt, defensiveness, trying to make the other pe person seem like they are the problem, it's because of you this is happening, right, and taking no uh, responsibility yourself, whether it is the male or the female. So this is what I'm saying. By his research, this is the common element. What this hadith is talking about is specifically the difference between the male and the female to each other. Okay? But why this connects with this hadith? Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the most crooked part is what? The upper part, which the ulama have translated to be the mouth, the way women talk sometimes. So, uh, stonewalling, which is just tuning out. I don't care what you have to say. I'm not going to care about what you say. So, flooding, flooding is flooding a person with criticism, invalidating their feelings, invalidating them as a person, saying you're nothing, you're no good, you know, I don't need you, uh, get out of my way, so on and so forth. Um, so, these are the things that he says, if this, when this starts happening, where... And this is what sisters need to be careful of. Which remember, I said, this is on the positive side. The men are being told, be kind to women, regardless of what their uh, behavior is like, as, as a female. The other hadith that we studied before, uh, in the lecture that I, was called, When the Wife is Ungrateful, it says, because of the, the ungratefulness to the husband, and when the woman says, you never did anything for me. This type of attitude, the sisters have to be careful about having, but also the men need to be not criticizing their wives all, all, all. So this is common. Both sides need to be careful of that when they are communicating, they're not, uh, they're not using offensive language in their communication. Non-confrontational non uh, language. That when the wife talks to the husband, or the husband talks to the wife, they're both using non-confrontational language, they're not blaming each other, they're not accusing one another, and so this is something that both sides need to be careful of. Now, let me go back to the, uh, there, there's a lot of other things I, I need to discuss. So, another thing that I would like to, so this was called the seven principles of successful marriage, but I'd like to share with you uh, this other uh, writing, piece of writing, that uh, is extremely important. Um, this is a book by Dr. Laura Leschlinger. I don't know how many people know her. She's a very famous uh, uh, personality in the field of uh, physiology, psychology, and so on and so forth. She wrote a book. It, it, it is called The Caring and the Feeding of the Husbands. It's a book for the wives based upon her many years of talking to so many people in her talk show, radio talk show, counseling people, and talking to husbands, talking to wives, the letters she's received. So, just to give you a gist of her book, I'm giving you a gist of her whole book, and just bullet points, and you'll see how this relates to uh, the, the entire discussion that we're having. Men, the first point is, that has to be kept in mind, you know, just like in Qur'an, certain things are assumed. Like for example, Qur'an never says to parents, be nice to children. Because it's, it's understood, what? That, hus that parents love their children. Right? Certain things are just assumed. So, men, the first point in her book, her book is uh, a book to be read, but I'm summarizing some parts of it. First point is, men need women. This is the nature of men. And 
this need gives women huge influence. Because men need what? Women. You see, inside the house, maybe the female has a dominant personality and the husband doesn't have the dominant personality. Maybe the husband has a dominant personality and the female doesn't have the dominant personality. Inside the house, the, the, the status that the Qur'an has given to the men, uh, the men have one daraja, right? And This is a legal status. If you go in front of the court, what the wife does, who is responsible? The husband is responsible. <coughs> For the court system, the husband is made responsible. Okay, you are in charge of taking care of this girl because in the nikah, the husband takes the responsibility of uh, taking care of the wife. And so in the court system, when you go in front of the judge, the husband is responsible. But in the house, sometimes the wife can be dominant, sometimes the husband can be dominant. So this is just a natural way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. But the point here is, this. but men, and as I don't know if I've mentioned this in this, uh, but studies after studies after studies after studies from Maslow, Abraham, you know the hierarchy of needs, the hierarchy of needs. Uh, but Maslow did a research in which he has basically conclusively showed that women, no matter if they are dominant women, if they are submissive women, or whether they're normal women, all women like to have a mate who's more dominant than them. All women like to have a dominant, more dominant male partner. Um, anyhow, men need women, and this need give, gives women a huge influence. Okay, and, and I'm quoting from her uh, book. Men are simple creatures who come from a woman, are nurtured and brought up by a woman, and yearn for the continued, the continued love, admiration, and approval from a woman. Okay? Women's, women have great power and influence over men. And wives in particular have tremendous power over their husbands. How they use this power essentially controls the relationship. Because women are the masters of most relationships and marriages. That's, and then she goes on uh, to say that, uh, that you know, the influence of women is naturally a lot. Because men need what? Women. So this is the first point. When she is talking to the women in this book, by the way, she's a Jewish lady, and uh, she's coming from many things she's saying are coming from the Jewish perspective, which are like kosher for us. If you see what I'm trying to say, it's kosher, it's kosher for us. Um, uh, so this is the first point she makes in her book, that men need women, and uh, this uh, th there's almost an imbalance because... Uh, men are grown up by their mothers, right? They're always under the influence of their... Look at Surah Al-Qasas, for example. Surah Al-Qasas is all about women and Musa. For example, in the beginning is his mother, right? Who puts him in the... Uh, the it saves him and puts him in the, in the sea. And then who follows him? The sister, right? And then who adopts him? Imra'atul Fir'aun, the wife of Fir'aun, uh, the wife of Fir'aun. Then what? Then when he finally leaves, there are those two girls over there, right? So, and then he gets married to one of them, right? So, the whole raising of Musa alayhi was around women, okay? So, this is an, is an example of how much influence women have over men. Second is, women err in favoring children over husbands. Meaning women choose their children over their husbands. So she says, Once wives become mothers, they, uh, they have no time to be wives. The men would even uh, compliment their wives on being great mothers, but expressed considerable pain over not being shown love, affection, or interest of intimacy. The typical reply from a wife wife challenge with this was I have only time to take care or I have only time for a limited amount of things and therefore uh, and, and that person that I'm going to take care of his child I'm just too tired for you that puts the father in the ugly uncom uncomfortable position of feeling competitive with and resentful of children with, with who he loves and this by the way has happened has happened ha happens uh, even uh, uh, that a, ch a husband 
would feel a type of, uh, you know, the wife is choosing the children over me uh, kind of complex happens a lot. So women, the wives need to, what? Uh, choose the husband over the children. This is how it should go. The, the, the instinct is to choose the children over the husband. But if you want the, the relationship to be good, then you have to always choose the husband over the uh, children. The third point, which doesn't need to much discussion uh, that she makes in her book, is men are different from women. I mean, this is a very obvious thing, but in today's world, unfortunately, it's not a very obvious thing because we treat men and women as if we live in a unisex society and that there's no difference between men and women, but there is huge differences. Uh, men are not mind readers. This is the fifth point. Men are not what? Mind readers, okay? Most men are very... Uh, so, so I've mentioned something about this even before, so I don't need to go into more detail. Uh, the, thir the, fifth, uh, the sixth point that she raises, which is interesting, is that in her experience, one of the biggest complaints men have is that after they're married and after they have children, women stop looking after themselves, meaning in terms of their uh, body, you can say, in terms of their intimacy, in terms of... Uh, keeping themselves in shape, and I've seen that this is particularly a problem in, in the Muslim world. And you know, uh, about this, I will give you an example, that, that both men and women are encouraged to do this. For example, uh, you know the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam that before the man comes, you know, if uh, the wife dresses up and is ready for her husband to receive him in the house, this is there. But we also find, for example, Ibn Abbas, that after he would give his durus in the morning, he would take a shower, and they'd be like, why are you taking a shower? You were just giving a dust. He's like, because I'm going to go to my wife. And you know also, for example, the Prophet Wasallam, when he would travel, he would stay in the masjid, would wash up, dress up properly, and then go to his wives. And so uh, the point being is that uh, Muslim women and uh, I guess sometimes husbands also, they stop, uh, uh, you can say, uh, dressing up properly for each other. You dress up very properly to go to a party, but you're not dressing up uh, properly and, and entertaining uh, the husband or the husband to the wife. Okay. So this was the sixth point that uh, she raised in her book. The next point is, is that, uh, uh, the, the, the next point you can just, uh, there are some points you can leave. Uh, women should appreciate, and this is another problem in today's world, women should appreciate a man's masculine, masculineness. See, men are asked in today's schools to find your feminine side. You've probably heard of this. Find your feminine side, right? Well, that's great, you know. But what about finding your masculine side, right? That has to also be given some uh, credibility and, and some... Uh, women should appreciate man's masculine, masculinity, okay? Uh, and, and, and this goes, uh, like for example, uh, even like for example, if a mother is holding a child, she'll hold the child very like close to herself, and then when she gives the child to the husband, he may throw up the child in the air, right? And, uh, and then uh, he will throw up the child and, and give adventure to this child. And a lot of women may not appreciate that. But that, that's, you, females need to, to, uh, to uh, embrace their femininity rather than, it's, it's the opposite. Women want to become like men, and men are told to become like, Embrace your femininity. But what needs to happen is women need to embrace their feminineness and men need to embrace their masculineness. Okay? And uh, of course the, the, the last point is that uh, you should just be happy with what God has given you. So why am I saying all of this will become uh, clear in the next uh, few minutes. So last time when I uh, left off, um, in this uh, discussion over here, uh, last time I left off, I was talking about how men and women are different. One of the major ways that they're different is that men don't like to be told what to do uh, unless they are seeking that advice. And they don't like unsolicited criticism or unsolicited advice. Because the male wants to be able to do things autonomously without soliciting advice. And but. How do women get what they want? 
Their general approach is by communicating, as we said. Now they can choose if this communication will be a communication of criticism, a communication of nagging, a communication of uh, putting someone down, or if this communication will be, and what uh, I will mention very quickly is, uh, the wise woman is that who doesn't demand. But the wise woman is that who asks to be listened to. You see the difference? Because the male, as we've already discussed in Dr. Laura's book, the female already has a great amount of influence on the male. So if she just stops demanding, and this is a trick for the sisters, if you just stop demanding and just ask to be what? To be heard. Your chances that your husband will do what you want or will end up compromising with you are much greater. Right? So this is what sisters need to know that they influence their husbands. And especially if they encourage their husbands, if they respect their husbands, because that's, just like I said, parent to children relationship, the husband is investing every day in his wife. Why will he not allow himself to be influenced by her? He will, right? The only thing is, is that it has to be done in a certain way. Anyway, so, coming back to this, so, men don't like to be demanded to do this. This is the nature of men. And uh, the other thing is that when men are quiet, it is because they just need a time out, a cool down, down time. And usually to be quiet means that men are thinking about whatever it is that they're, difficulty that they're having. When women are quiet, it has to do with either they don't, they're, women are quiet because they have something very nasty to say in their own words. They have something very mean to say, because I don't want to say something very mean to you, therefore I'm just going to stay quiet. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. And, and so when, when guys treat women like themselves and, and women treat guys like themselves, what happens is when a guy wants a time out, she is thinking that what, what is she would be doing, which is she's thinking, oh, he's quiet because he has something very nasty to say to me or because he doesn't love me, or because he doesn't like me, or because he'll never come back to me, whatever it is, right? But, in fact, guys just need a time out, they need to work things out in their mind, and then things will be back to normal. And when the guy comes back and things are back to normal, sometimes the girl, uh, the wife, is still upset that why is this happening? So, here one trick is that the husbands should tell their wives that I need time out, I will be back, I'm not mad at you, I just need to work out what's in my mind, and we can continue our discussion when I'm back, okay? And, and women need to know that when men want time out, to let them have their time out, because that is their way of solving the problems that they have. The other difference that I mentioned last time, but I want to mention it, women, what is the biggest complaint women have? Like all the psychologists, and I think psychiatrists would agree with this too, the biggest complaint women have is he doesn't listen to me, right? He doesn't listen to me. He doesn't listen to me. Huh? <laughs> okay, that too. <laughs> he doesn't listen to me. So what is their biggest... You see, there are two or three things here. Now I'm going to talk on the side of the women. women for women to be listened to is the same as for a guy if he wins, wins a race, you know? Because guys, for them, is to be goal-oriented. He feels like I accomplished something. Women feel they accomplished something if they can get themselves heard. But what happens generally is, when a wife is saying, I was going through this problem today, and I was going through this problem today, the guy immediately puts his cap on to solve the problems. And he starts giving her suggestions. Why don't you do this to solve this problem? Why don't you do this to solve this problem? Why don't you do this to solve this problem? And she sees that as you're not listening to. She sees that as you're not listening. Why are you know? She doesn't want solutions. All she wants is the affirmation that her feelings of what she's going through has been heard. That's what she wants. She I know from a guy's perspective, it sounds like, what's the use, right? Like, why would I tell somebody my problem if I don't want a solution? But that's how women are. They just want to be heard. And think about this. It's like how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it. Because 
uh, and, and one of the things about this, is so one thing men have to do, the husbands have to do, is to learn to listen to their wives and get the acknowledgement that, you know, did, did you say what you wanted me to you know, say to me? And don't give them any solutions, immediately at least, so that they feel that they've been heard. But see, the, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this is that women can just feel satisfied just complaining. You get it? Just by complaining, they feel, and as long as they feel they've been listened to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala satisfies their emotional validation, their emotional need. Right? And so this is what it is. Like for example, I think I mentioned this last time, but there's no problem mentioning it again. The story of Omar bin Khattab when he was, when somebody came to complain about his wife, right? And uh, the man came and knocked on the door of Omar bin Khattab and he saw, well, Omar's wife is fighting against him. You've all heard this, right? So, you know, he was about to leave and, you know, Omar comes out and he's like, no, I gotta go find another door. This door is not gonna answer my questions. But Omar said, what? She's, yeah, she's criticizing me, but she also takes care of my children. She takes care of all my needs. She does this, this, this. So the Prophet of Allah is saying they're curved and the most curved part is their upper part. So just be nice with them because they will still serve you. They'll do all your things, but sometimes they have to let their feelings come out. Sometimes they have to let their criticism come out. And that is their way of... So Allah just allows them to say it all out. And if you be patient with them and be kind with them, then you can go around this curve. And all you have to do is be patient and everything works out. So, uh, the, you know, for example, also, like, think about this situation, right? I mean, like, you all know about the story when Aisha, the Allah, and her, uh, the Prophet was with some companions, and he had some companions in the house of Aisha, and the food was brought from another wife's house, right? And uh, Aisha went and grabbed that food and broke it, the, broke the pot of food, right? And, you know, this is, this, is, this is a major thing, but the Prophet ignored it, you know? If you forgive and ignore, sometimes it's good to ignore. And he just said, your mother is, you know, upset. He said to the companions, your mother is upset. And so it should be normal that if in public, sometimes one of the wives, she gets upset. And, uh, you know, it's just, that's how it is, right? So you have to go around the curve, okay? So uh, women need to be reminded that husbands are not, uh, okay, so... Um, so this is uh, one aspect, is that women try to, and then I talked about the whole phenomenon that women are trying to communicate and the husband doesn't want further conflict, so he tries not to communicate. And so what happens with that? Now, from, his hus from the husband's point of view, listening to the wife, just listening to the wife and offering no solutions, okay, may feel like he's not doing anything, but he is. Listening is very important to women. It's like winning a job race, okay? So all you have to do is go to your wife every day and say, talk to me, right? And you know, in, in this culture, I don't know how many people uh, are aware of this, but you know, they say the ideal, you know, situation is where a girl has a guy, like a gay guy to talk to because they're feminine in nature. Just talk to the gay guy all you want. And then you have like some, you know, very muscular guy to have your intimacy with. Okay, I'm sure you've all heard of these things. So, but the main thing is, is that you listen to your wife and, uh, and then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy uh, for everyone. So, uh, the one thing that I do want to mention about the Prophet and listening, it, there's nothing particular about the Prophet listening to women. It's not like, from the Hadith literature we have, there's nothing like, for example, the Prophet listened to women more carefully. But what we do find is a few things. Number one, the Prophet listened to everyone carefully. He listened to everyone carefully. It was just his general habit. And the Prophet ﷺ would ask the person, have you finished saying what you want to say? You know. And then the, when the Prophet person would say, and the Prophet uh, would not interrupt the person. And when the person would, and the Prophet would ask, did you finish saying what you say, say, wanted to say? And the person would acknowledge, yes, I finished saying what I want to say. And then the Prophet ﷺ would respond, whether it was male or female. But what we do find, one difference between the men and the women with the Prophet ﷺ, if you notice in the Qur'an many times when it says, yes, alunaka, yes, alunaka, yes, alunaka, many of these situations or more of these situations are women. 
more of these situations are, are women. And also, the, uh, when the, the whole situation, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, when the, the, the wife came to complain to the Prophet about her husband, uh, that surah that was revealed about that, what that tells us, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and so, uh, what we find is the men, Mujahidina, yes, yeah. Uh, what we find is the men were scared to approach the Prophet for more or less. You know, you would find many hadiths, they're like, no, no, you go ask the Prophet, no, no, you go ask the Prophet, right? But the women, they felt kind of like they have a right to go and complain to the Prophet. So, this, you can tell that the women. They knew they had access to the Prophet to say whatever they wanted to, right? And they knew that they would be heard. If they went to the Prophet, the Prophet would listen to their complaint. So this thing about feeling like he listens to us, right? Uh, whether it is the husband or the uh, counselor, whoever, one of the main things is to be able to just listen. And a lot of the problems, and so when the Prophet is saying they're curved, and the most highest part and is, is the most crooked part, all that takes is just what? Listen. Listen to that curve. Listen to the complaint. Right? And be kind to them. And then you will, uh, then that will help your relationship. Uh, and so, when women complain, they need understanding and not justifications. So generally, when a husband is listening to a wife and she's complaining, you know, you, we didn't pay this, or we didn't do this, and this didn't happen, so men will immediately start what? Justifying themselves. But what women need is understanding, yeah, I know we didn't pay the bill, that must have been very bad for you, or however you want to uh, make it out. They don't want to hear justifications. Uh, so, uh, if the wife says, for example, you know, uh, you're, you're never with me, or you've been gone all day, or something like this, rather than justifying, well, I had to do this and I had to do that, what they need to hear at that time is something more like, yeah, I know it's been a long day, why don't we try to come together, spend more time tomorrow or later today, something like this. So, uh, when the Prophet ﷺ is saying this hadith about women being curved, and the highest part is the most curved, he's talking about communication. Right? And when he's saying being kind to them, he's talking about uh, different things, but that also includes communication. Uh, okay. okay. Men feel frustrated by problems when too many, too many complaints are coming unless they're going to do something to solve it. Meaning you can, it's not in guy's nature to throw a lot of problems on him and tell him don't solve it, right? But that's exactly what needs to be done. And women just want to be validated, this is my feelings, and understood. Uh, she, meaning the wife, should help him know that listening is helping her. So she should tell her husband, Thank you for listening to me. This is what I needed. I really appreciate the fact you listened to me. Because the husband will many times feel like he really didn't accomplish anything. And that problem that he can solve very easily he will be bugging him because all he wants to do is, look, just do this and it'll be solved. But he won't be able to say it because the minute he says it, she will feel invalidated. So she should try to tell him, this is, this is good for me. So she should also communicate with him without blame or being accused. We already talked about the effect of communicating with calling nicknames, blaming, accusing. These are the things that deteriorate a marriage more than anything else. A man should remember a woman has a right to feel upset. And often husbands have to remember it's better for them to let it out. So this is what this hadith is basically telling us about the women being created from ribs. And, uh, and, uh, and so, the rubber band uh, example of the rubber band is the male, where he pulls back. A lot of times, let's say, husband and wife have a great time together, and then the husband just needs his time alone, 
or he needs his autonomy, whether going to work, whatever it is. Women sometimes perceive this as something negative. Uh, now, so the men have this thing about going away and then coming back like a rubber band, okay? Which the women can perceive as rejection. The women have something which the men just don't get, and that is that women work like a wave. So, here, this is what happens. Let me explain this this way. What happens is, she's happy, you're happy, but that happiness is going to end because she has a wave. And when she's in her wave, and then she becomes better, so you're like, okay, things are fine now. And you think now things will be permanently fine. Right? Because uh, she went through what she's going through, whatever she was going through, and now she came out of it, and now she should be staying out of it. But lo and behold, a few weeks later, she comes back into that same mindset. And you're like, what? You were just fine, and before that you had this problem. I thought we're out of this problem, and now we're back in this problem. So women work like waves. Again, it's very interesting how the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the rib. Because the rib is also curved like a wave, right? So, uh, so this is what the wave, wave, this wave happens because of their changes in hormones and so on and so forth, many reasons. But when the women are normal, they're normal. But when they start going down and you can start seeing that their emotions are changing, the mood swings are changing, whatever you want to call it, you can't change that. This is another thing the Prophet is saying about the wave. You can't change that. That's just how the women are. And they need to come down and they don't need you to solve their problem at that time. They don't need you to help them. They just need you to sympathize with them. They just need you to be there for them. And just to listen to them. And then, when she goes down, her feelings are overwhelming. So she's very irritated, she can snap more easily, she can uh, vent more easily, so on and so forth. And it's the time where she actually needs the man the most, most at that time. But it is also the time where she will snap back at the man most. So she's at this low level where she needs validation. No, no, you're a great wife, I appreciate you, so on and so forth. And you're thinking you're bringing her out of this, but you're not. It's just a natural, it just takes its own natural cycle. And then you're th thinking, okay, Alhamdulillah, everything is fine. But only to a few weeks later, she's back into the same. <clears throat> so there's no way, all you can do is just be there for her. And let her go through these waves that go up, down, and the waves then they go back up and down, and it continues. Don't expect, okay, she needs to hit rock bottom. A man should not try to tell her, I'm going to fix everything for you, because it, it can't happen. Okay? A man should not try to fix her from going down, nor try to fix whatever she's complaining about, unless she asks, I need you to fix this. But all she really wants is to be heard. He just give, needs to give her support and attention. Don't expect her to feel well right away. And this cycle, the same issues will come again the next time the cycle comes up. Which could be, you never do anything for me, or just having that... Uh, and you're just thinking, well, we just fixed whatever the issues were, now these issues are back. But this is like I'm saying, a normal wave. Okay? Men typically give... Uh, so, so, okay. So, this is the time... This is the time where she's on the bottom, where she feels like I give, 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 and get nothing back in return. This is the time where she feels that the most. Men, okay, so now let me just change the subject a little bit. So, the things men need, so when you're, the wife is communicating with the man, the man is communicating with the wife, the things men need emotionally from the wife are the following. Number one, she needs his trust. Men need to feel my wife, what? Trusts me. If the wife, and I talked about this last time, if the wife feels my husband trusts me, and she, uh, there, is, there is two types of neediness. One is, I don't trust you, and I need you to do this for me because I don't trust you. That doesn't help the men. But the other is, I trust you, and can you please support me? 
that type of attitude makes the bond actually stronger. So men need trust, admiration, encouragement, I believe in you, and respect. These are the things men need emotionally, that my wife trusts me, she respects me, she admires me, she, you know, she, she, uh, she believes in me that you know, I'm a good uh, husband, that I've done for her, whatever. And women need understanding, validation, caring, and devotion. Okay? Three common mistakes by women. Women in their communication with husbands, the three common mistakes are, number one, they try to improve his behavior by giving unsolicited advice. Why do you do this? Right? Why do you, by trying to improve the husband's behavior. Because again, women are nurturers by nature, so their project, it becomes a project to improve my husband. This becomes a female's project. But giving unsolicited advice, I told you, doesn't work. If number one mistake is to improve his behavior by giving unsolicited advice. Number two, complains and does not appreciate. Number three, talks to him as if he was a child. Number four, uh, and the three, is, so these are the three biggest common communication mistakes women make because these are the things that make a man feel like she doesn't trust me, she doesn't believe in me, she doesn't appreciate me, she doesn't admire me, she doesn't look up to me. And the three common mistakes men make in communicating with women minimize the importance of her feelings and needs. So when she says, I need this, I want this, we say, oh, it's not a big deal. No, to her it's a big deal. Blames her for bringing him down. He's saying, okay, I'll listen to you. And then all she's doing is complaining. So this brings him down. He blames her for that. This is the mistake that men make because they don't need to blame her. Right? We don't need confrontational language, and, we, and the men just need to listen. It's just something you have to live with. So, and number three, do not give reassurance uh, after listening. Now, the other thing is, um, when the men and the women, they're communicating with each other, they have to be very careful about Especially the, 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 both husbands and wives are coming here. They need to be very careful if they're using criticizing language or not. And also another point is, the closer the man is to his wife, the harder it is for him not to argue. Because the more closer he is to his wife, the more he is emotionally attached to her. Which means that the man will, he will get upset more easily because of her, his closeness to her. Okay, and vice versa is true, but it's specifically true for, for men. Uh, so when a wife gets upset over something he has done, so when the wife gets upset over something what he has done, the man takes it as, uh, takes it as she's, she doesn't love him. So if a wife says, I, I don't like you did this, why did you do this? Or if the wife complains sometimes in this manner, why did you do this or do that? The men tend to take that type of complaint as, she doesn't love me. Right? So that needs to not be done. When he explains himself, when he says, well, I did this because of this, this reason, she feels invalidated. She feels that her complaint is not legitimate. She feels her feelings have been invalidated. Often saying, you should, and the man says, you shouldn't feel like that. A lot of times, husbands will say to the wife, no, no, you shouldn't feel like this. So she feels invalidated by that. Women need to feel cared for. Men need to feel trusted or appreciated. Frustration, worry, disappointment. Uh, every cell in the male body tries to explain away the feeling that she has. When he's late, she says, how could you, when he's late, the husband's late, she says, how could you be so late? And then the husband tries to justify. But the point is, is that it's better not to justify. It's better to just listen to what she has to say. That will get you through the problem quicker than justifying yourself. Because justifying yourself means to her, he doesn't care about my feelings. After a man gets a lot of approval, so what happens is when the husband and wife are together in the beginning, in the beginning when they're together, 
She, get, she gives him a lot of approval, a lot of appreciation, a lot of admiration in the beginning of the marriage. Right? And then all of a sudden, that finishes. That free admiration that she was giving, oh, I love you, and I'll, you know, uh, and we're, th that admiration goes down, that goes away. Why is that? Because also over time, while that happens, also, ratio proportionately, what happens with that, men also become, of, over their wives, more judgmental, and what she sees as he's being mean to me, because he's no longer listening to her. You know, there was one psychologist who said, you know, the one quality a perfect husband would have, one quality a perfect husband would have, is that he has excellent listening skills with his wife. Because that's all Allah is saying, you can be... I mean, I'm saying this to the sisters, but uh, Allah is saying to the men, you can be on top of them, but be careful of their curve. Just listen out what they have to say. And if you can bear what they're saying, and if you can be kind to them, you can then actually make something good of that relationship. So now, what I want to do is, now I want to uh, mention some more. How much, more, how much time do I have? Uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes, okay. So in these ten minutes, I want to make... Uh, um, two, two, two points. Number one, how does the chart work? The basic building block of any relationship is trust. Without trust, there's no relationship. Whether it is with Allah, or whether it is with a human being. If you want a relationship, you have to trust. Trust, I'm not talking about the romance that happens in the beginning, but later on. So the basic building block of any relationship is that you have to trust. Trust leads to friendship. Trust leads to friendship. When you have friendship, then you have certain things in common. You, have, you, you, you are trusting one another, you're doing things, you trust one another, you do things with one another. Friendship then leads to, leads to love. It leads to what? Love. Now this friendship and love, they're kind of together, but love is a stage where you are emotionally dependent upon the other person. Where you're what? You're emotionally affected by the other person. When the other person's sad, you're sad. When the other person's happy, you're happy. As the Prophet said, Al -hub, Al -hub wa you know, the, so, so love has feelings of dependency on one side. And the other thing is, the difference between friendship and love is, in friendship you don't necessarily have expectations. In, in friendship you don't necessarily have French expectations. But in love, you have feelings, dependency of feelings on one side, and the other side you have your demands, your expectations. Right? So between your emotionally being dependent on one side, with your wife and the husband with each other, and expectations on the other side, you have to juggle these two. And how can you, if you, now if you have love, and if one side feels I'm always giving, right? My expectations are never met. His expectations are always met. So if there is this, then love will start to break. So the, what needs to be built on top of love is something we can just simply call respect. Where, you're respect, where you respect each other's expectations and you respect each other's uh, emotional dependency upon each other. And how do you do that? The major way to do that is by having proper communication. So this is, so there is trust, friendship, love, but with love you have demands, expectations, and with love you have emotional dependency, which means that now the other person can hurt you, and you can hurt them. But if you're not careful, you'll end up causing an imbalance, which then causes the breakdown of the marriage. So on top of this you have to have respect. Okay, respect of her or his emotional needs, right? For the guys it's different. Like I said, for guys it's admiration, admiration, love, respect. For women it is caring, attention, the neediness, so on and so forth, being listened to, right? So they, respect allows you to balance the expectations with the emotional dependency upon each other. And then, how do you do, have that respect? How does that work out? It works out through communication. And so, this is, and so this is one thing. This, the, next, the second point I wanted to make, so this chart of 
trust, friendship, love, respect, and communication. And the other thing is that there are five, there's actually a book out by this name, it's called The Five Languages of Love. Okay, in the five languages of love, meaning how do people express love? Okay, so there are five ways. And some of these ways, now you tell me, which of these are more important for the male? Out of the five, which of these are more important for the male? And which of these are more important for the female? The first one is affirmations. Affirmation, the guy needs affirmation that he is, what? Uh, he's a good husband, that I trust, just like Khadija trusted the Prophet ﷺ, right? So the guy really, the guy is very, the guy's ego is very delicate in some ways, in that way. The guy needs affirmations. A guy needs to hear that he's doing a good job. A guy needs to hear, you can do it, right? Go for it, you can do it. And this is why they say behind every great guy, there's a great, great woman. Because if there's somebody affirming him, right, encouraging him, then a guy can do anything, right? The second is gifts. And as you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, gives gifts, give gifts, because this increases love. In terms of human nature, who needs gifts more, men or women? Women, women right? Because they are the ones who like to receive, right? They want to be on the receiving end. So affirmations is for men, gifts is for females. What about acts of services? Like making food, uh, acts of services. Who likes to be the king of the house? The men like acts of services, but wives also like acts of services. So that's both. Both of them need that. But a guy appreciates the wife's acts of services, right? As I appreciate you doing this, but when the husband does it for the wife, she, it's it's her need. It's more at the level. It's more at, at the primal level. Okay. Physical touch, physical relationship. Who needs it more, men or women? Women need it more. Both need it, but you know, okay? Okay, and the fifth is quality time. Quality time. What we consider quality time. Spending quality time with someone where you're only giving, un you're giving undivided attention to one person. Who needs this more? Women. Women need this more. So, acts of service is both, Physic, uh, physical is also both, and quality time is females. So, aff affirmations for men. So, the wives need to give affirmations to their husbands. Especially considering that when they're going through this, what the men have to sometimes deal with, right? And the women should acknowledge this, that yeah, okay, I, I say so many harsh things sometimes, or I'm so rude sometimes, or I lash out sometimes, I should replace that with a lot of affirmations, okay? And the women, they like the gifts, and both like services, acts of services. Both of them like a, a physical relationship, and women in particularly like what quality time of undivided attention of caring from their husbands. Now, how much time do I have now? Two minutes, okay. So we can inshallah end here, and we will continue next time on uh, just press the red button.